I mean, there was, there were feces stains on my toilet multiple times. Now, I'm not trying to be funny. I don't want anybody to think I'm, I'm just trying to be a shady person because I promise you I'm not. All I can do is speak my truth. There were feces stains on my toilet multiple times. And of course, no one, how do you confront someone about that? You know, how do you confront someone and say, hey, can you clean this up? Like, you know, like that's embarrassing on his part, on my part. So I would just clean it. But yes, there were feces stains on the toilet multiple times. We blog, we gossip, we share porn, we are media, we are thirst trap boys. Welcome to the TTV newsroom. Okay guys, so there is a lot going on right now in these online streets, okay? Listen, an online user named Tim is King 12 on Instagram is claiming that former The Come Up Atlanta star rock i believe he was on season one of the come up atlanta now this guy is claiming that he met um he met rock in april and that rock gave him a sob story because you know rock is currently battling um stage four cancer so apparently uh, rock gave this guy tim is king 12 on instagram a a sob story about how you know he has nowhere to go he has no money and blah 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 so tim was like hey you know you can move in with me now keep in mind tim does not know this this guy from a hole in the wall they met in april rock relocated all the way to la the next month in may now tim offered rock to stay at the apartment rent free until um you know rock landed on his feet so um apparently um as soon as rock got there he got a job as a bartender and according to tim as king he was earning a good amount of money and rock didn't offer to pay anything in the household until august 15th when he offered his anonymous roommate 250 dollars which i mean come on in the city of los angeles that equals to about two dollars and fifty cents no shade now, this guy further claims that when August 15th came and went, Rock told him that he would instead be giving him half of his $1,800 stimulus check, which Rock allegedly had no clue of, you know, when the check would even arrive in the first place. Furthermore, this guy is stating that Rock, instead of pitching in for rent, food, or utilities, that he went out and purchased a Mercedes and a MacBook. Now, it doesn't stop there because this guy has described in great detail that Rock has horrible hygiene, doesn't clean up after himself, and even leaves feces on top of the toilet seat. Now, my, 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 just when you think the guy has said it all, said it all, he also is alleging that um, Rock is the guy behind the infamous burglary of Todrick Hall's house back in early June 2021. Now, um, the guy also claims, well, text messages will appear on the screen, that um, Rock called, you know, the guy asked Rock, well, why don't you ask your friend, you know, T.S. Madison for help because, you know, you work for T.S. Madison, blah, blah, blah. And Rock apparently said, I did ask her for help, but she's very stingy with her money. Now, after all of this was said and done, um, this guy, Tim is King 12 on Instagram, he decided to go live, and this is what he had to say about the situation. Take a look, and I'll come back with the rest of my commentary. This is a fucking mess, okay? My post suggests today's topic, I wanted to do a live video about Mr. Uh, Robert. Also goes by Rock, Sherelle. I want to go into kind of how we met and how do we get to this point where I'm doing a live video uh, discussing this kind of stuff on Instagram. Now, most I've talked about mostly everything uh, throughout the post. I hope y'all had a chance to go through the postings and things. But I also wanted to do this live video as well because a lot of you were sending me questions. So I went to Atlanta. I think in about March or April 2020, I took a trip to Atlanta. 
um, I met Rob, the Rock, uh, Robert, whatever. I met him there, and he, uh, you know, gave me this real big sob story. You know, a sob story about how he was going through a lot in life, and you know how, you know, he wanted to come to L.A. He wanted to be an actor. Uh, he just had a lot of things that he seemed like he wanted to do, but. He said he just really didn't have a lot of income. He was just going through a lot in life. And I, I felt for that. You know, I am an Aquarius. So, you know, we do have big hearts as Aquarius people. So I felt for that. I invited him to come out to L.A. and offer him an a, a opportunity to live with me. Live with me and uh, pursue your dreams here. Be able to pursue your dreams here. Now, I specifically told him I was offering him a place to stay only until he kind of got on his feet. Excuse me, I was offering him a place to stay for free. Only until he got on his feet. Uh, when, when Robert got here, he immediately found a job. He immediately started making income. We talked about these things. He was a bartender and he was hosting parties and he was making good money. He actually told me, I'm not going to, I'm not going to disclose it here, but he told me he was making good money. And he told me the actual amount as well. Uh, but so I didn't ask him for anything, you know, I, I, I welcomed him to the city and I just said, hey, just, you know, I'm not going to I'm not asking you for anything right now. So after a month goes by, I'm thinking to myself that he would offer something because you are staying with me. All your belongings are at my house. I kind of revamped my life, uh, revamped my space for you to live here. So I thought you would offer me something like a decent person. But he never did. He never offered me anything. And so after two months go by, I kind of just had a pleasant and civil conversation with him. And I tell him, look, you know, I'm not asking you for half the rent. I'm not asking you for, you know, not even 40% of the rent, but I just think you should pay something. I, you know, I, I gave him the opportunity to cut, to give me that number that he could pay because I wanted it to be fair and I didn't want to take up, take too much of his money. So he gave me a lot of hassle about that. It was, I got bills and he gave me a lot of attitude. And I was like, whoa, you know, and I'm like, well, at the end of the day, I don't care. You know, I, I still need you to offer something to me. So finally, um, he ignores a lot of my text messages at this time. And then finally, after I kind of, I guess, hassle him about it, he uh, finally says, okay, well, I gave you $250 a month. And... I didn't like that price because I obviously this is Los Angeles and that's like an insult really, right? But I went ahead and I said, whatever, I'll agree to it because I, I did I didn't give you a number. I told you to come up with a number. So hey, 250 it is. Um this was in I believe July, uh mid-July. Now he's the one that said uh he would start paying rent on August 15th. He said I want to start paying August 15th. And then August 15th just steadily coming, steadily coming, and he he asked me for my uh, cash app, and I give it to him. And when August 15th gets here, he doesn't make any payment. Doesn't make any payment. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm not going to call somebody and remind them to pay rent. You know, like, I'm not going to call you and, and remind you to pay anything, because he's the one that tells me about all these bills that he has. So... Surely you have what, what you need. You have the date in mind about all your other bills. But before I go any further to that, let me say this. When Barbara first moved here, he bought a Mercedes Benz. Uh, instead of offering me rent, instead of offering me anything, he, in, in that time period, he was offering to, uh, he told me he was going to put food in the refrigerator. He told me he was going to do this, do that. It was all a lie. It was all just. I guess just to lead me on, I guess, but he never came through with any of his promises. And he texted me one day and he was like, hey, can you give me that number to that dealership that you got your car from, blah, blah. And I gave it to him. I, I, I'm not a, I'm not an unpleasant person. You know, even if I disagree with something, I'm not an unpleasant person. So, you know, I'm telling him that um, I gave him the dealership. He, he went and got a, a, a Mercedes Benz, haven't paid me anything. And I'm asking him, like, when are you going to help help on the rent? He told me uh, he texted me a very nasty text message, which you can see on the feed page on, on, on the Instagram page. Told me I just bought a, a MacBook. I just bought this. I, you know, I was like, all oh, that's fine and dandy. It, but it's all, it was almost like he was arguing that 
because he has bills, he can't pay rent somewhere where he lives and somewhere where all his belongings are. But that's just who the, that's the personality that we were dealing with. So anyways, August 15th uh, comes and goes. He doesn't pay anything. Actually, before I get into that, let me say this. And this is just a truthful statement. And I'm not trying to be nasty or, or shady or whatever you, whatever you want to call it. Robert is a very uh, nasty person. Um, nasty in terms of hygiene. Nasty in terms of I had to continually talk to him about dishes being left around the house. Uh, he, w- he would order pizza and he would leave the pizza box in the kitchen for literally two, three days. I'm um, on the counter. I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, he must going to come back and eat this. I don't know. Because the thing is, he would do this stuff and then he would leave for a few days. And then he would come back and he would leave. So he was basically treating my house like it was some type of hotel. Like he was, like he had maids around here or something. So I, I, as you can see on the page, I sent him a text message about that. And just told him, look, this is really nasty that the way you're doing the dishes. And... When you're leaving dishes everywhere, you have to, yeah, I told him you have to start cleaning up after yourself. So he told, of course he said, oh, I'm sorry, he's going to get better, whatever the case may be, it didn't happen. So August 15th, which is the day he said he was going to start paying rent, it comes and he doesn't give anything. He doesn't text me and say anything, it just, the date just comes and goes. So August 16th comes and goes, August 17th, I believe he texted me on August 18th. And he says some story about, hey, I didn't get my stimulus check yet. Um, I'm going to give you half of that. And I, I, at first I thought he meant half of that in terms of it would be a supplement. It would be additional to the 250 he already promised. But Robert, would, he really felt like he was going to, he, he was dismissing the $250 he promised. And he just was talking about this uh, half of the stimulus check. Now, obviously, I'm not a dummy. Um, I know that a lost stimulus check can take weeks or even months. And even he himself didn't have a date of when this was going to happen. He just said, well, I got to come and get my social security card and stuff. And I got to take that to the office and just sound like a big runaround. So finally, I just tell him, look, Robert, you've, bro- you've broken so many promises. Why don't you just leave? You know, you're, you're at your friend's house a lot anyway. So why don't you just go ahead and leave and, um, you know, you know, be with your friends or be in, be in, be in LA. Cause I live outside of LA and he just begins to ignore, begins to ignore my text messages, text messages. Now keep in mind all this time, his stuff is still here. I mean, I'm telling him, you know, can you come get your stuff? You know, I don't want to throw it out. Cause like, again, I'm not an unpleasant person and I don't want to be one, but I tell him, just come get your stuff. At this point it's taking up space. Um, come get it. He ignores my text messages. He, he, he's, he's doing whatever. So, uh, and I missed one thing. The reason Robert told me he wanted to come to LA was because he wanted to so-called be an actor. And I was very much so wanted to support that. I very much so wanted to support that goal because obviously I live here. I used to actually live on the East Coast myself and I know what it's like to be on the East Coast and just kind of need need that nudge to get out here to the West Coast. You know, you don't really know anybody, what have you. So I was, I told him, I said, you know, that'd be great. You can live with me. I, I go to a very prestigious church here. Um, I go to a very, I'm a part of a lot of organizations. I know a lot of casting directors um, come here. And, you know, let's get you a, a reel, uh, a, a demo reel together and all that. He never mentioned the demo reel again. I told him to send me, send me his work so we can get that work, get work on that. The thing is, Robert was never serious about this acting stuff. When I invited Robert here, uh, I li- I genuinely wanted him to come and be here just and sleep on my couch and for it to be a total platonic relationship. I never, it never, no, no, no don't get me wrong. I did think, you know, and anybody can think that someone's a, a handsome person. I mean, I thought he was like a, maybe a handsome person, but I wasn't attracted to him in that way. And then when he moved in in with me and I saw his nasty, very nasty ways, very poor hygiene, um, I definitely wasn't attracted to him then like that. Living with someone can definitely just make you see the real them. I don't care how cute or how handsome, how pretty they are on the outside. Living with someone would make you totally unattracted to them if they are not the person you think they were. But don't get me wrong. I was never attracted to him in the first place. 
But even if I was, after he moved in, it totally went away. So, um, no, we never messed around. I never tried Robert. Um, the countless times he slept at my house, of course he was living here. I never felt on him. I never uh, touched him. I never asked him to like to sleep in the bed with me. Like I, I, it, not, none of that ever happened. It was totally platonic. It was totally professional. And someone just said, did he really boo boo on the toilet? I mean, there was, there were feces stains on my toilet multiple times. Now I'm not trying to be funny. I don't want anybody to think I'm, I'm just trying to be a shady person. Cause I promise you I'm not. All I can do is speak my truth. There were feces stains on my toilet multiple times. And of course, no one, how do you confront someone about that? You know, how do you confront someone and say, hey, can you clean this up? Like, you know, like that's embarrassing on his part, on my part. So I would just clean it. But yes, there were feces stains on the toilet multiple times. Now he may, he may deny it and he may really think it didn't happen because like I said, I never approached him about that, but that definitely happened. So anyways, I just want to get all the facts in here right quick. Um, today, Robert with his friend that I don't know, but they both showed up at my apartment at like 6.30 in the morning. I think it was maybe six, but it was either six or 6.30. So I wake up to banging on my door, um, and I wake up to, I, I hear voices outside my apartment. I genuinely believe that it was an intruder in, at my door, that someone was really trying to break into my apartment. So I'm kind of going into defensive mode at this point, really. So finally, I kind of wait around a little bit. I, and then I hear the uh, locksmith. They, they hired a locksmith to come and uh, if you guys don't know, a locksmith can kind of break into a door, break, uh, open a door, I should say, without causing damage. They can kind of, you know, if you get, so a lot of people don't know that. But anyway, that's what this locksmith did. He got my door open and you guys can see that video on my page. So they got my door open. Luckily, the chain was on it, and uh, they, they were, I, I immediately closed the door and I locked it back. So the locksmith and Robert start saying, "Hey, if you don't open, I'm gonna call the police." I'm like, "Call the police! Like, what is the police gonna do to me? Like, I live here. My name is on a lease and everything." So, anyways, 20 minutes go by. The police finally come. His friend that he's with, and, I, and his friend is very disrespectful. Now, I do know his name. I'm not gonna say it here. Cause I don't want to make it about him, but the friend is talking trash the whole time. And, oh, why don't you just give him his, give him his stuff and all this other stuff? Because Robert was claiming that he was coming, he needed to get his stuff. But Robert wasn't being honest because he actually already came the previous week. Um, or he sent a friend to come the previous week and already got most of his stuff that he said was important. So all the stuff that he that was left behind, I actually was going to throw it away because I thought it wasn't important to him. So anyways, I hear the friend's loud mouth outside my door um, for about 20 minutes. The police finally come. Of course, the police are on my side. The police, t uh, he, Robert tried to come in and say things were his when they were not his. Uh, he tried to take my shirts and um, take my take the, take suitcases. And I was like, hey, this is not this stuff is not yours. So the police, of course, told him to put it down. So he took everything that, you know, he could take that actually was his. So on the way, uh, the police uh, finally wrapped up the matter. And as the police were leaving, um, the, the friend says to me, oh, you, I'm going to get the last laugh. Keep in mind, I don't know this guy. Never heard of him. Don't don't even know his Instagram. Like, don't know anything about him. So the, the friend, first, the friend tripped down the stairs trying to carry the stuff. I wish I had that on video because that was very, very funny. The, the friend grabbed most of the stuff and tr tripped down the stairs. And it's just saying, talking mess in the background. Oh, I'm gonna get the last laugh. I'm gonna get. I'm like, you know, this is not my normal state. I, I live a life of peace. I truly do. I live a life of peace. I live a life of uh, not drama. I, I'm that. That's not who I am. So, you know, the friend's talking all this crap, whatever the case may be. And then the friend texts me. The friend texts me and 
started calling me ugly. Uh, again, I don't know this guy. He's like, you're, you're ugly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch that that live video if you're doing at eight o'clock. You better start saying, you better say the right stuff. Um, don't, don't play with me like you play with Rock. Um, you know, you're gonna give Rock his suitcase, and even if, even if your body is in it, like all these threats. All these threats, and 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 I got, I still have the text messages. I put, I may put it on the on the page later, but you know, I just, I just, I wanted to do this live video just to get, let let Los Angeles know that Robert is not a good person. Again, this is not my style. This is not who I am uh, to be in drama, do live videos. But you know, Robert is not a good person. He's a manipulator, um, and he's a liar. And I just want the people of Los Angeles, Los Angeles County, which is my home, to know that. To know that if you encounter him, uh, most things that come out of his mouth is a lie. Most things that he say he's gonna do, he's not gonna do. And you can literally, I literally gave this boy the world as far as I'm concerned. Like, you know, before he started really making money, um, even though he started making money pretty quickly, but I still was kind of keeping the, the refrigerator filled with uh, my stuff. And uh, excuse me, with, with food that I said anybody can get, um, you know, I took him to LA a time or two, you know, to drop him off at an event. Like, and of course, he had and he had he had the, the, this apartment to stay in. Um, he said he needed to get get his medicine shipped here. Um, I, I allowed that to happen. So, Robert, as far as I'm concerned, I didn't give him a million dollars, but I gave him more than enough, and he still pissed on me, and he still shit it on my toilet. And I just really feel like that's just, this is a very, very demonic person that we're dealing with. And even when the police were here, I told him, I said, Robert, why don't you just give me the money that you owe me? The money that you said you was going to give me. Why don't you just give it to me? We can end all of this. And he tells me, uh, James, stop talking to me. James, stop talking to me. Um, because... Uh, the police officer though doesn't want you talking to me blah 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 so my thing is you would rather because these are not false accusations but you would rather the truth the heavy truth about you just be out there instead of just giving me the money that you owe me and sure enough that's what he did so after he left by the way this would you not know this boy had the audacity had the audacity to send me a cease and desist letter and i may post that on the page as well he sent me a cease and desist letter telling me to stop defaming him, uh, stop slander, blah, 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 blah. And I wrote him back. I said, look, everything I'm saying about you is the truth. You know, defamation, slander, and libel, all that is for untruthful remarks. You, he, th he threatened to sue me, whatever the case may be. I said, you can't sue me for telling the truth about you. But sure enough, he sent, he sent this uh, cease and desist letter. He sent it so boldly as if it was going to make me stop telling the truth. Now, anybody with common sense, and I wrote him back, by the way, let me say this. I wrote him back and I said, uh, well, I'm doing a live video at eight, but why don't we just, why don't you send me a settlement agreement, pay me $350, which is partially what you owe me anyway, but pay me $350 and I'll, I'll sign a NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, as you know. And he never, he never emailed back. So obviously you don't care to end this as much as you say you do. Now, I know what a lot of things, uh, some things I want to talk about of uh, T.S. Madison. I want to talk about T.S. Madison and I want to talk about Todrick Hall. So when I met uh, Robert, he claimed to be very good friends with T.S. Madison. As you can see in the text messages, um, he claimed that T.S. Madison was his mother. That's how close he claimed they were. Now, now, let me say this uh, before I say that. I didn't know who Robert was before I met him. I know that he thinks he's a star. And uh, I think there was a text message somebody sent me. And he was calling me a fan. Uh, he, he said I, I was a fan turned enemy, blah, blah, blah. And I, I didn't know who this boy was. I, I literally met him and just kind of invited him out here out of the kindness of my heart. I did not know. I never seen, saw it. We, I never watched anything that he appeared on. Uh, matter of fact, while he, when he moved in, we watched one of his little reality shows, I guess, that he did. We watched it together. That was my first time seeing any of his work. Um, so I, I'm not a fan of yours. And even after I've, I've seen your work now, I'm still not a fan. There's nothing to be really a fan of. No, no disrespect. 
But, you know, he claimed T.S. Madison was his mother. And I always thought that meant he would speak very highly. So I asked him when he was talking about all this, uh, these triumphs, that he, these triumphs that he was going through in life. I said, well, have you ever reached out to, reach out to T.S. Madison and asked for some money? And I see, yeah, asked for a loan, whatever the case may be. And he said, T.S. Madison is stingy with her money. He said, I've tried to ask her, but she's very stingy. Now, you guys can see that text message in on the page because I have nothing to lie. Everything that I'm saying is provable. So he said, she's stingy, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dang, that's kind of like uh, concerning that you would say that to me. You just met me about someone that, somebody that you call your mother. But whatever, you know, he said it. And that kind of just kind of gave me a red flag that he'll, he'll he'll talk about you. He'll turn on you. But, you know, I, me being dumb, I ignored the red flag and still just said, you know, come on out. And, and, and I agree with this Hershey Kiss TV. That is T.S. Madison's money. She's not obligated to give that to you. But that's this is the kind of psychopath that we're dealing with. We're dealing with someone who feels like he's so entitled. He's so he feels like he's so obligated because, like I said, he really feels like he's some Denzel Washington, Michael B. Jordan, Chris Brown type of figure. That's what he thinks in his head. He thinks he's like so famous that he feels like you, you should give me the money because I am who I am. And it's like, who are you, though? So anyways, Todrick Hall, as you guys know, in my post, I made the comment that I uh Felt like is my opinion that Rod that uh, what's his name Robert was involved with uh, Todrick's Hall being Todrick's Hall, Hall's home being burglarized. For those of you that don't know, real quick, Todrick Hall uh, is a famous person, and his his home, his LA home, was burglarized uh, back in uh, I want to say June, and you can Google that story. It was actually a pretty big story in the industry. Uh, they took a lot of items, took a lot of things. Todrick commented about it uh, online. Now, about two or three days, maybe two, three, four days before the robbery happened, Robert was at Todrick Hall's home. Now, of course, that's not enough evidence to convict someone, but Todrick, uh, Robert was at his home. And I'm a big media freak. I'm a big um, news freak. So I, I kind of see everything that happens in the media. Nothing really goes past me. So the next time I saw Robert, I asked him, I said, hey, did you see what happened um, at Todrick Hall's house? Um, what happened with Todrick? And Robert looked so nervous. He looked so like nervous. He was like, yeah, I mean, you guys can't see my face and I wish I could show you the facial expressions. But he was kind of like, yeah, I saw it. What, what, what? He was stuttering like, what, 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 what about it? What about it? I was like, damn, I'm just asking you, like, did you see what happened? Like, just try to have a conversation. But that he was just really nervous about it. And also, uh, back then, Roger, Todger, I mean, excuse me, Robert and I were uh, following each other on Instagram. So I saw the original caption that he put for being at Todger Call's house. Like, it was a caption. It actually tagged Todger in the post and said, I'm at Todger Hall's house. Thank you. For inviting me and you have a beautiful home blah 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 and oh somebody asked about my band-aid i had uh i'm fully vaccinated i had my second vaccination shot on um last week so that's what I, it can come off now i just haven't taken it off so anyways um uh the, the original caption that he had he he edited it he edited the caption very heavily to now when you go to the go to the post you can't even tell that he was at um, this person's house. So just all those things combined, the totality of the circumstances makes me believe that he was involved in some way. Now, if the icing on the cake for me was when he tried to break into my apartment today, that was the icing on the cake was when I found out that he knows how to break into an apartment. He knows how to break down a door and not leave damages because if I wasn't here, they came really early, but if I wasn't here, he literally would have gained access to my apartment and I would have never known. He could have got whatever he got and left and not caused any door damage or what have you. So because I know for sure that he knows how to break, break in doors and he knows to call locksmith and things, 
it just makes me it leads me to believe now i'm not saying for a matter of a fact i know for sure he broke into Tadra Carl's house but i certainly believe that he was involved i believe that he has some type of information about that incident okay so it's honestly the mask for me <laughs> Oh, now, um, this guy, he's wearing a mask because he didn't think that people would find out his identity, but obviously he doesn't know who the fuck TTB is. This is the guy, his name is James Camper the Third. Hi, James. Now, I believe James. Now, the only reason why I believe James is because Rock sent a cease and desist letter. Now, no shade, but whenever anybody sends a cease and desist letter, it is because, bitch, you are exposing my truth, and I need you to keep it on the hush, because I am out here trying to make these money moves, and you are ruining my brand, okay? That's basically what it's giving. However, James Camper III, I'm looking at you sideways, my friend. I feel like you need a hug. I feel like you need love in your life, because what person in their right motherfucking mind, okay? invites a complete fucking stranger to live with them after only meeting them a month prior you met the you met the man in april and you moved him all the way to los angeles in your motherfucking apartment in may the next month are you crazy are you crazy and then you say to him hey you could live with me rent free what until you get on your feet and then you have the nerve to get mad that he's not paying you rent while he's busy trying to get on his feet? You act like he's wasting money. This guy is out here buying a car. He's living in Los Angeles now. He's living in California. You need a car in California to get around, okay? Sure, there's public transportation there, but let's be honest, the public transportation in California is not quite as good as it is in New York City. So yes, you need a car to get around those hills, okay? So I, I think he's doing the right thing with his money by trying to get a car, trying to get a computer so he can apply to jobs. Now, sure, did he really need the MacBook? I'm pretty sure he, he could have went to a public library. No shade. But yes, he got a car. So you see him getting a fucking car and you're like, ah, oh, you should be paying me rent. You should be doing this. When you already told him that he could stay there rent free until he gets back on his feet. And that that's what he was basically trying to do. Now, also, also in the live that you just did with your mask on, sir. Come on, James. You said, sir, that Rock was barely ever at your house. So if he's barely there anyways, what the fuck? I think $250 will suffice. Like, I'm, ne I'm barely at your house. I'm never here. I'm barely ever using your, the lights or, or the electricity or, or, or eating your food in your house. Like, I'm barely doing anything here. I'm barely ever here. This $250 should cover it, especially while, you know, I'm trying to get back on my feet and I'm trying to save up money for an apartment and blah, 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 blah. However... The feces on the toilet, bitch. <laughs> no shade, Barack. You could have wiped that shit off, okay? And you also like if you're not gonna if you're not gonna give this man money if you're living rent free there you should definitely clean up you should definitely throw out the trash you should definitely mop sweep and do the dishes like simple things like that should have been done no questions asked and that's on period. But everything else, like, the story is a mess. Like, it's a mess. Like, I just can't, like, I don't know. I just feel, I don't like when people air shit out like this. Because it's like, you already know this guy is battling stage four cancer. And sure, that's no excuse for him to not be as hygienic as he possibly should be. But I don't think anything that happened really warranted you coming on social media and airing him out the way you just did. Like I'm disgusted. I, I like you know. I could see if I could see if you guys had an agreement to where he was supposed to pay rent, but you told him it was rent free. So for you to be all on your feelings about how he's not paying you money when you when you told him from the jump it's rent free until he gets back on his feet, and him buying a little ass car, even though it's a Mercedes, he should have bought a cheaper car. Him buying a Mercedes does not equal he's back on his feet. Back on your feet is like. I have, you know, I'm, I have half, I have half 
amount of money saved up towards an apartment. And we all know apartments in California are super expensive. So I could see if he had like $3,000 saved up, okay, towards his, um, towards his apartment, and then he could start chipping in. You know what I mean? But not him buying a car and him trying to go to jobs or try to go to places, you know, things like that. And then you were like, oh, well, he was always partying. Listen, if he works in the bartending industry and he wants to be an actor, you have to party because you have to network. It is what it is. You might not think that, but it's, it's, it's a fact. Like a lot of people, why do you think a lot of people in the industry go to parties? Because they're networking. They're not just there to get drunk and have a good time. Sure, that happens, but they're really there to network. I think this whole situation could have been avoided. I just think James Camper the third is in his feelings. He's hurt. And he needs a hug. Anybody who lets anybody who lets somebody move in move in with them after a month of knowing them needs a hug, needs a shrink, needs a therapist. ASAP. Like that's in fucking insane. Anyways, what do you guys think? Um, we reached out to Rock over here, and he said he is willing to do an interview with us. So hopefully that happens so we could get his side of the story, folks. And that is the latest TTB breaking news.